Good morning, folks. As we open watching a close-up of that plasma filament lift yesterday morning, know that we've got a ton of news to hit today, including the saving of a volume of knowledge. The hacker of Steinbacher's channel deleted all his videos, but we got them first. Check the links below this video for your free Steinbacher resources. Now let's get to business. We're at spaceweathernews.com and we find the last day on our star pretty quiet. We remain without sunspots, but we do have patchy coronal hole signatures on the south. All geospace conditions are quiet except for the cosmic rays, currently very high and even showing up on the solar wind charts as those spikes on the right. Of course, those do cascade out in the atmosphere or hit the mantle, not Earth's magnetic field, and so there is no geomagnetic effect from them. All quiet and in the green magnetically. We're starting in China where the story of the typhoon isn't over. The storm trailed a heavy line of precipitation behind it, furthered the inundation of the coastal regions and those just inland, and taking out a number of buildings as well, one of the worst to hit the country in years. Up next, we're talking the ancient bombardments of Earth and the major problem of logic. Scientists have begun to accept that the planets changed places, sending tons of asteroids towards the Earth, Jupiter and Saturn, Neptune and Uranus, and all while they had formed closer in to the solar system and then migrated outward to their current positions. They say that they have now pushed back that event in timeline almost half a billion years, back to near the very start of Earth. The problem is that our ancestors claimed to watch this happen. It was their stories of the gods. They spoke of the planets ruling and then going away. And it is just very difficult for me to believe they got the correct answers by accident and that their imaginations recreated a timeline billions of years earlier. Key climate point up next, how the icebergs stall global warming. They add cool, fresh water to the world, only to refreeze in winter when the pole has no sunlight, break and do it all again next year. Folks, one of our biggest points is that over long periods, ice confined at the poles means we get warm mid and lower latitudes. When you start that cycle and distribute the cold and the chemistry, you begin to enter the cold periods of Earth. That simple. Up next, neutron stars and their super glitches. These are their rotation speed changes that rev up and wind back down. They now believe a triple layer star scenario with a core superfluid mantle and large outer hydrodynamic observable zone. By the way, this is real Chandra X-ray images of the Vela glitch there. Folks, a master's thesis from four years ago has been put online, almost certainly because of the surge in popularity of the plasma universe concepts of late. Indeed, one of the cases used here was Dr. Peratt's continuation of alphanic cosmology, namely the plasma. Not a bad little expose, including a hint at why it was absurd for Rubin's galaxy curves to toss Peratt's science ideas out the window. Just a reminder, tomorrow our catastrophe movie comes out right here. Our climate movie comes at the end of the month, and linked below this video is the plasma movie from August 1st, Dr. Peratt and all. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 4.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.